Welcome to part two of the PB phase. And today we're going to talk a little bit more about the process around receiving the results of your findings and what happens after that. So in the previous video, we identified those high level steps. We gave you some tips and things that you should consider um, when going through those steps and then basically talking about what you should expect while going through that part of the process. In short, we've reviewed a lot about the board. We've talked about the composition of the board. We've talked about what the board uses as criteria for determining fitness or unfitness and how they are going to take their results and give it to, to you. So as a quick recap, the Peblo, in terms of the steps, the Peblo received that information from the MEB proceedings, all the approved documentation, forwarded over to the PEB, the PEB convened, they made the decisions, and then from there, they sent you the results of their decisions and you have to decide. So we're going to talk about a little bit more of the part of that process where you receive the information from the Peblo and dig a little bit further into the ratings, what happens, how they're going to get the ratings, things of that nature. So. According to AR 635-40, it talks about what happens when they need the preliminary ratings. If the initial decision of the informal board, if that decision of the PEB is that the soldier is unfit, the PEB president will request preliminary VA ratings for each condition the PEP found to be unfitting. So you're going to get a whole list of conditions back. They're going to get a whole list of conditions back and they're going to say, all right, this one he was referred for, he or she was referred for. Mm, let's take a look at this other one that wasn't referred for and let's evaluate to see if any of these other conditions should be uh, referred. Once the PEP receives the VA disability rating percentages, it will apply them to the conditions determined compensable by the PEB recommended disposition and generate the DA Form 199. This is what the DA Form 199 looks like. It's an old school one. There's obviously an updated one. I could not find an updated one online. But this kind of gives you what that form looks looks like. Key thing is, is to make sure that you see the conditions and then also uh, look at the uh, ratings and then look at whether what their criteria was. Now, was this, was this a result of misconduct? Yes or no, right? So just make sure you review this document very well. So now they've put it on the DA-199, and here we talk about how do they get the, how does the Peblo get the actual findings? Within three days of receiving the informal board findings, the Peblo will provide the soldier the PEP findings and a copy of the VA proposed ratings and benefits estimate letter. It is a proposed ratings, is not finalized ratings, is proposed ratings. The Peblo will inform the soldier of the PEB and VA findings, the soldier's election options, and the soldier's right to consultation with legal counsel. With the soldier, the Peblo will complete the DA form 5892, the Peblo Estimated Disability Compensation Worksheet. That worksheet is the money shot, right? That is the, hey, how much are you going to be awarded? How much are you going to, to get whether you are um, retiring or severanced? It's where the calculations come in. But the key point here is your election timeframe. According to the regulation, 
the soldier has 10 days from the receipt from the Pueblo of the informal board findings to make their election. It didn't say 10 business days. It said 10 days. The informal uh, PEB president will extend this 10-day period upon request. So I didn't know when I went through this that you could actually get a, an extension when good cause is shown. Now, here is the key thing. Listen up. In the absence of an approved extension, if the soldier's election is not received by the PEB by the 10th day, or the soldier concurs with the PEB findings and waives the right to demand or request a formal hearing, the soldier is deemed to have permanently waived their right to demand or request a formal board hearing unless good cause is established for the soldier missing the election deadline. Key information there. Talk to your lawyer, talk to your Pueblo, but just take a look at this. So what are your election options? Well, you can accept the PB, the informal PB decisions, or you can not agree or non-concur with the PB decision and demand or request a formal hearing with or without a statement of appeal, or you can not agree or non-concur with the PB decision with or without submitting a statement of appeal without demanding a formal hearing. That's all lawyer stuff. Talk to your lawyer, but those are the three options. I agree, I don't agree, and I want a hearing, um, or I don't agree, and I'm not demanding a formal hearing. 